Hi, I'm Dan Blondell, CEO of Nano One Materials. We're a process technology company specializing in lithium ion battery cathode materials. Specifically, our first big market is lithium iron phosphate or LFP, and we have the most advanced and most commercially viable alternative to China. And that's because our technology simplifies the process. We combine major components in the supply chain, the precursor process, the cam process, the firing process under one roof, and that drives down the capital intensity, the operating intensity, the energy intensity, the water intensity, and it eliminates all of the wastewater, which enables a, a much easier to permit plant than you would get if you brought the Chinese processing technology, let's say to North America or Europe. In the traditional process for making cathode materials, they start from iron sulfate. And in China, that iron sulfate is a tailings from titanium oxide refining. And there's lots of it out there. Uh, it's all different qualities. It's all dirty. It's all got a whole bunch of trace metals in it. And, and they will cherry pick the very best of that iron sulfate. They will work it up into iron phosphate. In doing so, they'll generate a whole bunch of uh, dirty wastewater uh, with the sulfate in it. They'll have to clean that water up and if they're going to discharge it into waterways. Um, and that's very energy intensive, very capital intensive. And they will also have to deal with the, 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 uh, the sulfate remains from that process. And most of it ends up uh, either going into, um, it goes into different markets, but those markets are largely saturated right now. So there's very little value in that material. Um, uh, once they've made that kind of iron phosphate and they've dealt with the waste streams, um, they then uh, lithiate it. They mix in lithium hydroxide. They either do it, I mean, they mix it all uh, in, a, in, a, in wet mills and, and dry it, um, uh, or they mix it all mechanically in a dry way. But it's basically, you end up with a mixed powder that goes into a furnace. And it takes, um, it takes many, many hours for the lithium uh, to migrate its way into the phosphate ultimately to form the right crystals that make a lithium uh, iron phosphate, uh, makes it work actually. Uh, and, and it can take 10, 20, even 30 hours to make these cathode materials in a furnace. And what you need is these big, long pizza ovens to, uh, to cook them in. And they go into trays, and those trays get pushed through on, on ceramic conveyors, ultimately to come out in a finished product. So that's how cathode materials are typically made in China today. That technology was largely uh, invented and, and developed here in Canada, in Quebec, by the team, by our team back in the early 2000s. Ultimately, it made its way to China, and that's what dominates the, uh, the manufacturing process right now. What we do differently, we combine that sort of precursor process and the lithiation process all into one. Lithium and iron oxide and uh, phosphoric acid all go into one reactor and they go through a chemical reaction. We're not just mixing them, we're actually chemically reacting them into an entirely different compound. And that compound fires very readily in high efficiency rotary kilns. We're able to cut down the, uh, the footprint, uh, physical footprint, the energy footprint, the capital intensity of those kilns. And we've also combined all of the reactors. We get rid of sulfation plants. We get rid of wastewater handling. We get rid of the PCAM plants. So that drives down, obviously, the capital intensity and the, uh, and the operating intensity. When we start to look at bringing uh, the process that exists in China today, if we brought it to North America and we built it out here, we'd have to build all that stuff I described um, as an industry. Uh, compare that to the Nano One process, and we have about a 30% savings in CapEx, a 30% savings in OpEx, 80% savings in energy and water intensity. We have 100% savings in, in wastewater because we have no wastewater. And, uh, and then from a GHG point of view, carbon intensity, it's about a 60% reduction in carbon intensity. So there's a lot of big benefits here. Uh, I, I'm at a lot of different events and I've heard from many, many players that we can't do this without China. Well, we're out there trying to prove that we can. We can do it by driving down costs, by driving down uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the permitting um, uh, issues. It's a much easier to permit plant when you have no wastewater. 
Uh, you don't have ballooning engineering costs. You don't have, uh, you don't, it doesn't take you as long to get to FID. So all of this leads to uh, much more certainty in the way um, that, uh, that industrials will make decisions on building these plants. And this has driven very much our licensing strategy, which we've spoken about in different segments of this podcast. The two big impediments to growth in the West of cathode materials and specifically lithium iron phosphate is access to raw materials. So right now, if we rely on the Chinese may way of making these materials, we will rely on China's iron sulfate in perpetuity. They're the only ones with that uh, level of volumes. The other one has to do with the water intensity and the water waste. If we bring uh, that, if we bring those processes here, it means we have to build custom plants with custom engineering and they have to be permitted for every piece of land they go on. And uh, in many jurisdictions, you simply won't be allowed to discharge uh, water into, into rivers and, and, uh, and uh, tide water. So these are fundamental impediments to growth in the, uh, in the West. And we've set out to solve those by uh, using iron metal powders uh, directly without having to go through an intermediate sulfate. And then that also eliminates the wastewater. And it's that innovation that largely makes our, our, our technology uh, very unique and very patentable. We have 50 patents granted in US, Canada, China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, uh, India, and we have another 50 patents uh, being prosecuted in jurisdictions uh, all around the world. And that has uh, given us a very strong advantage uh, with, the, with the one pot process and our direct from metal, what we call M to CAM process. M to CAM simply means we are work, we're making uh, LFP or, or nickel-based products directly from metal powders, be they oxides or metals. And we convert them directly into LFP in the one pot without going through a whole bunch of intermediate steps. This, of course, simplifies production and it drives down the, uh, the capex and, and operating costs. It's important to understand uh, that the elimination of wastewater, it, it cannot be understated how important that is. Um, all of these other processes out there have waste streams. Those waste streams make, uh, make permitting m much more difficult, obviously drive up the cost because you've got a whole bunch of custom engineering. And they, uh, often those costs get out of control. You get ballooning engineering that actually uh, becomes very problematic in projects and financial decisions. So if you can eliminate the, uh, the water, uh, you can shrink wrap the whole, uh, or the whole plant in something that has no externalities and it can be plopped down anywhere. It doesn't need to be close to a river or tide water. It can be put in the middle, uh, uh, it can be put in the, in the middle of a state or province or, or wherever you want. It can be close to a battery plant. It can be close to the, to the raw material inputs, but really other than, uh, other than power input and, and, and process water, uh, the needs are, are relatively straightforward. And that has really what has driven our licensing strategy because all of a sudden we can take the, the plant design, the intellectual property, the flow sheets, um, all of the know-how, uh, major pieces of equipment, and we can wrap them all in a process design package, what engineers would call it. It's basically we're shrink wrapping the plant. Uh, we can make it modular and we can build them out in a modular fashion, either uh, you know, right next door to each other on the same site or in a distributed fashion and we can license it out to many different players. We're, what we're trying to do here at Nano One is change the supply chain. We're trying to break the stranglehold on iron sulfate by going to iron metal powders or iron oxide. To do that, you cannot just be one company. It has to be a licensing strategy. We have to license the technology to many players because collectively, those players will change the supply chain. This is a very important part of our strategy. It's, it's the long-term plan. We plan to license these plants. We're doing this in partnership with Worley right now. We've got partnership with Rio Tinto uh, and other iron metal producers to develop the iron metal powders that come into the plant. And we are also working with very strong operators like Sumitomo Metal Mining, ideally as licensees or potential partners uh, into the future. There are many more that we have, uh, we have not disclosed at this point, but it's a very um, important part of our, of our, our future. And these, of course, uh, because it's licensing, we can license into the US, into Canada, into Europe, into, into, uh, into the Indo-Pacific region. And we can do that uh, and completely bypass any of the uh, trade uh, issues that are currently arising all around the world. Our plant in Candiac, where we have the experience and we have, uh, we have an 
an asset that's almost largely completely paid down and we've got the project to expand the capacity of that plant, those, that plant can deliver materials uh, to Europe and to Asia uh, in, in a very kind of efficient way and that allows us to diversify globally amongst all the different trade issues that are arising. And then lastly, uh, one of our key short-term objectives is to bring in defense, aerospace and ESS customers for the LFP from that plant. They'll be small players, but they will have no choice uh, really in, because we are the only, we're the most advanced LFP producer right now outside of Asia. Of course, we have to execute on that. We have to get our, our, our material qualified with every one of those players, but that is what uh, drives really the short term. And we are by and large immune to, the, uh, to uh, many of the trade restrictions that are currently emerging around the world.